let's review. I know I keep doing this, uh, and maybe you get a little bit, bit sick of it. However, I find it helpful because these, these four are really crucial for this topic. They're kind of at the center of what, what are decision support systems? Okay, it's this big flowery term, but what are they referring to concretely? So last week, and actually the term before that as well, our first kind, our most basic kind of decision support system was? A spreadsheet, thank you. If you say flat file database, that's, um, that's totally fine because that is, after all, what a spreadsheet is. Um, I think I said spreadsheet because it's faster and simpler. And also people are like, oh yeah, spreadsheet. I, I've seen them, I know how to work with them. Now, we moved on to the next kind. Uh, we're moving on to the next kind today, but do you remember what they are? What do we call them? Relational databases, right? So as opposed to flat file, in a relational database, well, what makes a relational database different from a flat file database? From a spreadsheet? What's the distinguishing characteristic? They have a lot of spreadsheets and they relate to each other. Okay, good, right? So this is basically a whole bunch of these with connections between the kind of data that you've got. Okay? So Relational databases, in, in a very real way, are, relate, are spreadsheets on steroids. Okay? Now, even though we're not going to look at them today, just very quickly, so you remember, what are the two more complicated types? Do you remember what they were called? Expert systems. And the very last one was modeled on the human brain, so it's called an artificial neural network. We're going to spend plenty of time looking at those two. They're a lot of fun. So, relational databases is where we're at today. Okay. Now, in order to explain, well, why, why look at these kinds of things, I want to go back to last week. And you may even like to open up the uh, basic, simple spreadsheet decision support system that you built, okay, just to jog your memory. My question is, in the process of constructing that decision support system, okay, what kind of challenges did you experience? What kind of things were difficult? What, what was frustrating? What kind of limitations did you have when you were making your decision support system? Anyone want to start us off? Okay, so well, let's, get, let's get to this. Uh, we're looking at these, and we're looking at the shortcomings of spreadsheets, right, as a, uh, as a decision support system. So, Oklavi just said, sorry, Oklavi just said increasing complexity. Now, I think that's right, I think that's probably the big one, but I want to go after it a little more, because that's quite vague, right? And in fact, not only is it vague, but I just told you, I defined these four, right, as getting increasingly complex, right? So complexity is not necessarily a bad thing. So in what way is the spreadsheets, the complexity of a spreadsheet, and how it gets more and more complex, why is that a shortcoming? Why is that a problem? Maybe I should ask. I asked you all to uh, do different things with your spreadsheet, right? What kinds of scenarios and decisions did you take for your spreadsheet to help people make decisions on? On the back, what did you guys do? Jack? Um, yeah, more specifically. <laughs> about what? What kind of decisions was your spreadsheet helping people to make? Okay. Healthy decisions, a little more specific. Helping about what? Like, is it about? Yeah, tell me, tell me more details. Okay, so that's what we covered. That's what I covered on the board. What did you do that was different? Your lack of an answer is very reassuring. Not go finish your homework. Someone else who actually did it. What else? Where did you go further from the spreadsheet that you had? Advice? Okay. What kind of advice, Sonny? Advice for what they can do about Okay, good. Who else went in that direction? Advice. Yeah, alright. Samuel, what kind of advice did your spreadsheet, like what kind of options did you have? Um, uh, I thin, uh, normal, and fat had three different options. Okay, yeah. So fat had a CD doctor. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> average had a uh, maintain a healthy weight. Yep. And uh, thin had keep a balanced diet. 
Okay, sure. All right. So basically, so of, of whatever class of kind of uh, weight level you were, right, it gave you a recommendation after that. Did anyone do anything drastically different from that? Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. So if you took your spreadsheet, right, and we had only a handful of columns, if you added some more, like say waist size, that's helpful, right? So then you can make a further recommendation based on not just weight and height, right, and age, but okay, what are your proportions like? What recommendations did you make? Just out of curiosity. Uh, that you need to, like some people are heavy, but they might just be muscle. So yep. In that case, they. You're not fat, really. Yeah, good, you good, you're good. So, all right, good. Now, you're getting at the fact that we've got all these recommendations, but as you were producing your formulas, right, it, um, it wasn't easy, was it? It was very easy to make a very small error, and your whole spreadsheet just kind of explodes. Uh, and even if you haven't made any errors, it's, it was complex to try and put in any kind of, you know, for example, samples one, right? You basically had one recommendation per level. Well, what if you're, you've got average people, average weight, right? Well, they, don't, they shouldn't all really get one recommendation, right? There's average people, and that's a really broad spectrum. Uh, you would want to have like four or five or 40 or 50 different kinds of recommendations based on what kind of average person you are, okay? So when we say increasing complexity, here's the real problem, okay? When you want to make increasingly complex recommendations, okay? So when your recommendations are more detailed, When that goes up a little bit, okay, say for instance, instead of, you know, one recommendation per body type, okay, suppose you wanted to double that and have two recommendations per body type based on some other factor like, say, waist size, okay. As the recommendations detail goes up, the complexity of the whole system goes up disproportionately. It becomes a lot more complicated, okay. Uh, if you want to think about it like this, uh, we were talking about one of the other examples of decision support systems was um, IBM's computer to play chess. Okay? IBM's computer to play chess. Now, when you want to make it better, more detailed at playing the game, okay, being able to read more steps ahead, the complexity of the situation gets dramatically worse as you just add the ability to read one step ahead or two steps ahead or three steps ahead. Just adding a little bit more detail makes the system much, much worse. Okay? So it's not like, for instance, you want to buy um, one donut, it costs you a dollar. And you want to buy two donuts, it costs you two dollars. And three donuts, three dollars. Okay? In that case, as you increase what you're trying to do, the cost increases at the same rate. Okay? So this would be like, you buy one donut, it costs you a dollar. You buy two, nut, two donuts, it costs you ten dollars. And then three donuts, it costs you a hundred dollars. You're like, for real? I don't want to buy donuts anymore, right? Um, <laughs> Of course, that system doesn't make sense because actually, economically, we do things in reverse. We reward people for doing, you know, for buying larger amounts. But in this situation, right, the system punishes you for trying to do more. The cost increases, um, not proportionately to how much you're trying to do, okay? What kind of decision you're trying to handle. Were there any other shortcomings that you found with working with spreadsheets? Data. What do you mean? Ah, okay, right. So one of the main limitations, maybe you didn't really sense it because the data we had was quite neat, right? But all of the calculations we were doing were just simple numerical ones, right? That's all you could really do. You're like, is this value greater than this? Or is this equal to this? They're all very, very straightforward, simple, okay? So the calculations are all numerical based. Now, of course, things are going to all boil down to numerical, right? But if we're, say, doing processing with an image, which, again, is numbers at the very basic level, okay? A spreadsheet can't handle that kind of thing, images, even though it's numbers, right? Because it's a, a higher data type, it's not able to deal with that kind of thing, okay? Bless you. I'll give you one more, okay? Which is that, it's similar to this first one, okay? This is about the detail of the recommendations. I want to make one... Uh, a, highlight a shortcoming to do with what kind of data you have and how much, how much you've got. Now, as um, the quantity of data you have increases, okay, you run up against some problems, okay, because if you remember, maybe you want to open Excel back up now if you haven't already got it. If you've got some numbers, okay, let me make this a bit bigger, I'm sorry. Okay, 
Now, I've just got three fields here, okay, which is pretty similar to what you guys had last week. Now, if I want to put these together in some kind of calculation, okay, what does it look like? Well, you say something like this, uh, this multiplied by this plus uh, this squared, okay, and out will pop some number in a second, okay. Uh, the problem with this, though, is that when you look over here, you're trying to understand what does this thing do. You're like, B1, A1, what are any of those? Okay, it's all very abstract, right? Now, why does it do that? Well, Excel has no other way to describe what these are, okay? Because the structure of it is very simple. This doesn't actually, these fields don't have names. They're just column A and column B and column C, okay? So as the amount of data increases, can you imagine if we didn't have three fields? If you had, say, 30 fields, what would this thing look like? It would be a disaster. No human could read it, okay? Uh, at least not without a university or something like that, or just sitting down and looking and getting a piece of paper and uh, drawing all over to try and work out what each of these referred to. Okay? So here's the problem I'm trying to draw out. When you have increasing amounts of data, how much data do you have? Okay? The spreadsheet becomes increasingly incapable of describing those pieces of data in meaningful ways. Okay, because just like I don't know what it is, it's just every column is all the same to me. Okay, and that brings us to relational databases. Okay, so what differences does a relational database have that helps it to deal with these problems? Okay, how does it deal with these problems? Well, for starters, we know that databases can handle a whole lot more kinds of data than just numerical data. Right, we looked at them before. For instance, you can put in text, you, it can do operations on that. You can put in binary large objects, it can do operations on that as well. Okay. On this last point here, think about how you get data out of a, um, a database. Do you remember we learned a whole language to do with it in that topic? What was it called? Do you remember? SQL. SQL. Now, SQL, Structured Query Language, it's not easy to read either. Not as, not as easy as English, right? But it's definitely easier to read than this gobbledygook, right? It's actually in words, okay? It does involve some operations and that kind of thing. But instead of B1, A1, C1, it'll say things like student.name, okay? Because you can actually refer to things by language, human language, okay? Based on the names that you yourself give them, right? So as the amount of data increases, you don't get the same problem that you have in a spreadsheet. And lastly, as, increase, as complexity increases, okay, we get all these different kinds of operations that we can uh, insert into a database, that it can return something far more meaningful, and it's not as much of a mess to put in if statements inside if statements, inside if statements, inside other functions, which are really, really gross uh, to deal with. Okay. 